So we're doing combinations with restrictions here. So it's a combinations question where maybe you have to choose something, something has to be included in the selection. Um, now the general rule with this is always as follows. So always consider the restrictions first. Don't try to do the combination question and then remove stuff. Always think about the restrictions before you start. So first question here, let's just jump straight into them. Grace belongs to a group of eight workers. How many ways can a team of four workers be selected if Grace must be on the team? Uh, so that means that there's eight people in a line. Uh, there's eight people in a line and we need to choose four, but Grace has to be on the team. So we're only choosing three people from, from this group essentially because Grace was one of the people in that group. So we're choosing three people from a potential seven. So the answer to part A here is going to be um, seven choose three. So that's going to be uh, seven factorial over three factorial four factorial. Okay, reading the next question here, not going to be much different here, I think. Um, a hand of cards consists of five cards drawn from a deck of 52. How many hands contain both the queen and the king of hearts? So we need to know how many different hands we can have. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, with a call contain both the queen and the king of hearts. Queen of hearts. King of hearts. And then there's three extra spaces um, here for our thing. Now, important to note here that the queen and the king could be anywhere. It doesn't really matter. We're just picking three extra cards. So we're picking three from a potential 50. Uh, so the answer to part B here is 50 choose uh, three. Now, I'm just going to put that straight into my calculator. I'm going to get 19,600 multiple ways to get one of these questions done but here we're going to do this question sort of in a backwards kind of way um, I'll show you what I mean four students are to be chosen from a group of eight students for the school tennis team two members of the same of the group Sam and Tess do not get along and cannot both be on the team how many ways can the team be selected so I'm going to do this sort of in reverse I'm going to find out how many how many teams have Sam and Tess on them. So in other words, we've got groups of four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to put Sam and Tess on the team, but it doesn't matter where they're sitting, they're there, where, wherever. So there's only two more people that can be on that team. Um, so the way to find out how many teams Sam and Tess have on them is just going to be, um, so I'm going to be choosing from six because I'm not choosing Sam and Tess, or I'm not choosing from Sam and Tess because they're already on the team. Choose, uh, and I'm just choosing two, six choose two. All right, so there's 15 different teams with Sam and Tess on them. Now, if I knew how many total teams there were, I could then subtract the Sam and Tess teams, and what I'd be left with is the teams without Sam and Tess on them. So how many total teams? Well, I've got eight students, and I'm choosing uh, four students. So eight choose four. And that's 70. And so finally, how many teams don't have Sam and Tess on them? Teams without... Sam and Tess. Well, that's going to be equal to 8 choose 4 minus 6 choose 2. 70 minus 15, 55. Also do uh, combinations from multiple groups. So you've got some girls on this side, some boys on this side, and you're creating one mixed netball team, let's say. All right, let's see. Uh, from seven women and four men in a workplace, how many groups of five can be chosen? Uh, first one we're going to do is just without restriction. So it doesn't matter how many boys, you can have all boys, you can have all girls, whatever it is. So in that case, we just 
push the two groups together, seven women and four men, so that makes 11, and we just choose uh, five from that, 11, choose five. So this is part A. And that's uh, 462. Okay, part B is where this question gets more interesting. Containing three women and two men. Okay, so uh, we need to figure out how many ways we can choose three women and how many ways we can choose two men, and then we can use our multiplication principle to put those two together. Uh, so it's going to be containing three women. So we're picking three women from seven. So seven, choose three. So that's the women part of it. Um, and we're choosing two men. So four, choose two but we need to multiply them together because each of these combinations can be uh, combined with each of those combinations. So it's a classic multiplication principle question. So that's uh, 210. Okay, um, now the next one, containing at least one man. This is one of those uh, questions where you're probably better off going sort of the back, the back way um, and just finding, instead of finding at least one man, finding out how many combinations there are with zero men and then subtracting that from the total combination. So we already know the total combinations. It's 11 choose 5. And then we need to subtract all the combinations with no men. Uh, and so all the combinations with no men, they're all picked from the, the women, right? So it's um, 7 from the 7 winner, women choose um Five. Okay, so eleven choose five minus seven choose five is four hundred and forty-one. One containing at most one man. That means we're looking for a group with either no men or just one man. So to get a group of no men is pretty straightforward. You just do um, seven choose five because you're choosing five people from the seven women uh, and then to choose at to do just choose one man um you're choosing let's do the men first you're choosing one man from the group of four so four choose one uh and then you're also choosing uh four four women from the seven so seven choose four and then they are multiplied together because each of those is can be combined with each of the other ones. Uh, but then these ones here, this is the addition principle. Because these are all of the versions with zero men in them. These are all of the versions with one man in them. We can add those together at the end. We get an answer of 161. They, sometimes you might sort of have a question that combines the ideas of permutations and combinations into one neat little package. So let's take a look. How many arrangements of the letters in the word duplicate can be made that have two vowels and three consonants? So an example of an arrangement of the letters in the word duplicate that have two vowels and three consonants is um, U, I, that's two vowels, and D, P, L, D, P, L. Uh, another arrangement of the letters in the word that have two vowels and three consonants might be uh, D, P, I, U, L. You can see that th these are the same combination of letters, but different arrangements. Okay, so first we need to figure out how many different combinations of vowels and consonants we can get. So, um, how many vowels are there first? There's one, two, three, four vowels. And I need to choose two vowels from that. So uh, four, choose two. So this bit here is the vowels. Now, the uh, consonants, let's take a look at the consonants for a second. One, two, three, four, five. There's five consonants, and I need to choose three of those. Uh, so five, choose three. Now that, they're the consonants. And if I multiply them together, I'll know how many arrangements of, sorry, how many combinations of vowels and consonants I can get. 
um, 60. But uh, that's just telling me that, like, here's a group, UIDPL. Um, now, those are the same same uh, combination, so that's not included in that. Another one might have been A I D P uh, T, for instance. There's 60 different combinations, but now I need to know how many of those arrangements can I get. So each of those 60 can be arranged five factorial ways. So that was the combinations. So now I can take that 60, 60 times, that's 60, times five factorial. That will give me how many arrangements of those combinations there are, because each of the 60 can be arranged five factorial ways. So that's 7,200. Now, we can do all that just in one step. It's probably a little bit neater to say that the answer is five choose two times five choose three times five factorial, 7,200. Uh, okay, so there's how to do a question like that. Finally, a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer are to be chosen from a group containing seven women and six men. How many ways can this be done if exactly two women are chosen? All right, so we need to find out how many ways you can choose exactly two women. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four people that we're going to choose. And we're going to choose. Um, from seven women, seven women there. So in terms of, I'll just do a line here so we know we're doing part B. So in terms of the women, first of all, we're going to choose seven, from seven women, we're going to choose two. And from the men, from six men, we're going to choose two. Now, that's how many um, combinations of, of um, four people we can get. That's that. Now, once we've got those four people, we can combine them as that person's a president, that person's a vice president, or uh, that person's going to be the treasurer. We can combine them in uh, four factorial ways. And then there's our answer: seven thousand five hundred and sixty. Okay, lots of stuff to consider there with combinations with um, restrictions, but think your way through it step by step by step.